The United States consumes nearly 4 trillion kilowatt hours of electricity every year, and to make that much electricity using only solar panels, we would need almost 8,000 square miles to be completely covered. But with the help of transparent solar panels, we will be much closer to being self-sufficient without having to cover an area as large as New Jersey. Hello people of the internet, I'm Nico, and today I'll be shedding some light on the latest solar technology and explaining why this was the next big milestone for mankind. But let's start off in familiar territory with the traditional solar panel. Currently, with solar technology where it sits, we could power the whole United States if we took just 7% of Nevada and covered it with solar panels. Now, that's still a very large area, 7% of Nevada is nearly 8,000 square miles, but you can power the whole United States and it comes at no cost to the environment. So far, the big hindrance has been money. If my math is right, it would be roughly $7.5 trillion, but even so, it would still be cheaper than a nuclear or coal power plant on a cost per watt basis. So what about transparent solar panels? When did this all happen? Well, actually, they've been around for a while, sort of. Previously, the only way you could have transparent solar panels was by taking the conventional photovoltaic material and either making them so thin that they become translucent or by segmenting them, where you just take the cells and separate them enough for light to get through. And if you don't know what photovoltaic means, that's the term used for present solar cells. And it specifically means the conversion of light using semiconducting materials. And if you aren't familiar with semiconducting, then don't worry because I'll get to that in a sec. It has to do with how transparent solar panels work. But what you need to know is that the previous transparent solar panels had some big trade-offs. If you wanted more efficiency, the panels would have to be less transparent. And if you wanted more transparency, you had to sacrifice efficiency. The new transparent solar panel is as clear as glass, but still converts about 10% of the light it receives into electricity, which is down from conventional solar panels at a bit over 20%, but is definitely still more than the roughly 8% efficiency of the so-called thin film solar panels. How it works is a bit strange, but still kind of simple in one case, and in the other case it gets damn complicated. In the first case, the glass panels have various salt crystals inside that absorb the light, specifically UV and infrared light. And when these salt crystals absorb light, they then glow. The light they produce is sent outwards to the frame of the glass pane where there are narrow strips of regular old solar panels. But the people over at MIT have a different way that is damn complicated as you're going to see. So sit back, relax, and enjoy me stumbling through a damn good analogy to explain this. Like the previous case, there is the glass and the special something that captures the light. But MIT won't specify what exactly is going on, they simply refer to it as an active layer. What I can say about this active layer is that when it's hit with light, it allows the electricity to flow through the semiconductor that is built into the pane. And from there, it just flows as normal through the wires to whatever is being powered. But back to the semiconductor, I owe you guys a little demonstration. In a solar panel, there are a bunch of wires and semiconductors, but for the purposes of this, there's just one wire at each end of the semiconductor. Now, imagine the parts of the wire to be sections of a river flowing with water, which obviously represents the flow of electricity. Now, a semiconductor can be illustrated as a dam, and a dam is used to store water, or in this case, electricity. With that in mind, if you want the circuit to work and have electricity flowing, you need to have water passing the dam. And for this analogy, we will say the water can only spill over the top of the dam. Make sense so far? Because it's about to get a bit more complex. Now, the water, the electricity, is made up of electrons, and these electrons need some energy put into them in order to make it over the top of the dam. Now, in a solar panel, this would come from the photons in light striking the panel, but in this analogy, we're going to simply say it's a wave of water caused by something striking the surface. Okay, the larger the wave striking the dam, the more water that will spill over the top. And if there are no waves flowing to the dam, then no water will spill over the top, just like if no light were striking the solar panel. Here's the complex part. Solar panels can be made so that only certain wavelengths of light that have enough energy can cause the electrons to spill over the top of the dam. And for solar panels, the highest energy light they normally absorb is ultraviolet light, while the lowest energy light is infrared light. So for the analogy, we could represent these different solar panels with a larger or smaller dam, and there would be different sized waves for the different kinds of light. The larger the dam, the larger the wave has to be to get over the top of the dam, meaning the more energy the light has to have. But if we made the dam smaller so that even infrared light could make waves large enough, the energy you would get out of it would only be as high as the dam itself. The water will only always fall the height of the dam. That's what's happening in a solar panel. If the panel is set up for ultraviolet light, then only ultraviolet light is strong enough to get the electrons moving. But if the panel is set up for infrared light, then you could only get as much energy out of it as infrared light would put in. 
But enough of how it works, where's this even useful? Well, everywhere there's glass. That means office buildings, your house, your car, buses, trains, everything that has windows can be used to produce electricity. So that's less fuel that must be burned, less coal power plants and nuclear power plants that have to be built, and more clean, cheap energy. The guys at MIT say that these could provide over a quarter of a skyscraper's electricity needs even if running at a mere 5% efficiency. So figure over half of a skyscraper's electricity needs if running at the 10% efficiency the solar panels should be able to reach. Furthermore, because the panels absorb infrared light, they would greatly reduce the amount of heat that builds up in a room, further reducing the running costs of the building. So even if they are more expensive than regular solar panels, they will still cut down on running costs, and we don't need to allocate any land to them because the area already exists in every window made. The best part is that this is in the making now, and we'll be seeing this being integrated within the next few years. If this is used in cars, it could save some fuel economy otherwise needed to run the air conditioning, which you wouldn't need to run as much anyway as the panels absorb infrared light. Then with EVs, it'll help charge the car while it's parked, and that, along with the new government incentives, will make EVs a very attractive option. But more on the government incentives in my next video. All around, this is a big win, and I would argue that this is mankind's next big milestone to achieving a clean future. Did you understand anything I said in this video, or are you as clueless on the topic as I still am? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, people of the internet, peace out.